Welcome to Planet Rock Live. Planet Rock is our children's ministry here at the Rock Church and Road Outreach Center in San Bernardino, California. It is our mission to teach the Word of God to kids all over the globe. I hope you're ready to have some fun. I know we are here at Planet Rock Live. My name is Pastor Mondo, and today we're gonna learn how God is always ready to forgive us. Now, this is part four of our forgiveness series. We've learned so many different things about forgiveness and how important it is to the Christian life. We've learned really what forgiveness is. We've even learned how to forgive. And now, boys and girls, we're gonna focus on you. There's gonna be times where we need to say, I'm sorry. And oh my gosh, that is one of the hardest things to do, to admit that we're wrong, to say, I am sorry. Woo, do we need God's help? Well, then this video segment is packed with information for you to grow with God in learning how to forgive. Sit back, pay attention, and let's experience Planet Rock Live now. Hey there, my name is Ashton, and welcome back to this series called Forgiveness. This is starting to freak me out. I am not having a good day today. I did something pretty bad. I feel so terrible about it. I was with my friends at the mall and we were just having fun shopping together when we went into my favorite store and I saw this dress. It was so beautiful. It was the most perfect thing I had ever seen. It was absolutely gorgeous. I knew I had to have it. But then I looked at the price tag. It was so expensive. I knew there was no way I would ever be able to afford it. But I just had to have it. I mean, it was perfect. It was amazing. So I took it. <gasps> I know, I know, it's terrible. I feel so awful about it. I feel so bad. I don't think I can be forgiven. I mean, I did take the dress back to the store and I confessed to the store owner what I had done and he forgave me, but I just don't think God can forgive me for doing such a horrible thing. I know, I know. We've been talking all about forgiveness. Yes, that, and how everyone can be forgiven. But I don't know, I just feel so terrible. I don't know if I can ever be forgiven for what I've done. Hold on, I just remembered a story from the Bible. There was a man in the Bible who had done some terrible things. Things that were way worse than what I did. He had done so many things wrong and sinned so many times that people wanted him to die. <gasps> oh no! But Jesus still forgave him. You know, maybe there is a chance that he'll forgive me too. In your lesson today, you're going to learn how you can be forgiven and how Jesus wants everybody to receive forgiveness. Until next time, this is Ashton. See ya. Hello, boys and girls. My brother Seymour and I are here today to teach you the power verse. Are you ready, kids? It goes like this. 1 John 1, 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Well, Biddy, that is a very long verse, but uh, I am pretty smart, you know. Um, let me try it, okay? Okay. <clears throat> 1 John 1, 9. But if we... Um, wait, I know. The next word must be confetti. Yes, no, but if we no, confetti... No, wait, Seymour, the word is not confetti. It is confess, but if you confess... Oh, what's that mean? What's confess mean? It's when you admit to something that you did wrong. Like when you were playing basketball inside the house and broke the window. You had to tell or confess to mommy what you did. Oh yeah, no allowance that week. So that's what confess means? Yes, Seymour. Here's the verse again. 1 John 1, 9. 
but if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all un oh, from all wickedness. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, oh, oh, oh. I, I, I got it now. First John one nine. But if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful. Wait a minute. Who's Him? That's God, Seymour. You confess your sins to God, then He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Want to try it again? Okay. Okay. I think I got it now. First John one nine. But if we confess our sins to Him. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. So, if you want to be free from sins, all you have to do is confess Him to God and tell Him you are sorry. And He will erase them like they never happened. He will forgive you once and for all. And you won't have to pay your allowance either. <laughs> Let's say it together one more time, Seymour, and this time join us, kids. One, two, three. First, First John, John 1, 9. 9. But, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and, and to cleanse us from, from all, all wickedness. wickedness. Hey, that was pretty good. Pretty good, Seymour. I did good, huh? You did good. I told you I was smart. Yeah, you're very smart. Yeah, let's go. Today's Bible story, found in Luke chapter 23, takes place during one of the saddest moments of Jesus' life. Jesus had just spent three years of his life teaching, loving, and helping others. The religious people of Jesus' day felt threatened by him because they felt he was making them look bad. They feared that the people were going to stop following them and doing what they told them to do. So they paid one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, to betray Jesus. For only 30 pieces of silver, Judas led some soldiers to where Jesus was praying. They arrested Jesus, put him on trial, and then sentenced him to death on a cross. That is where we find Jesus at the beginning of this story. Jesus is nailed to a cross. He is hanging between two thieves. These thieves were guilty of many crimes, but Jesus was totally innocent. Suddenly, one of the thieves began to make fun of Jesus. He screamed, if you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Jesus didn't respond. He said nothing. Suddenly, the other thief began to take up for Jesus. He said, stop it. Don't you see? We are guilty, but he isn't. Then he spoke directly to Jesus. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This man understood that Jesus was the son of God. He knew that Jesus was going to heaven. He wanted to honor Jesus with his very last breath. Jesus turned to the thief who had just honored him and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. What? How could this man, who was a sinner, a thief, be with Jesus in paradise after he died that day? Wasn't it too late for him? Wasn't he too bad for Jesus to save? No, not at all. Today, we're going to learn that there is absolutely no one that is too bad for Jesus to save. No matter what you've done, Jesus is ready and willing to forgive you. Pay attention to the lesson today. It could mean life or death for someone you know who still needs to accept Jesus as their Savior. No matter who you are or what you have done, when you need forgiveness, Jesus is right there, ready to forgive. Hey boys and girls, Teacher Gabby here. And Teacher Turbo. And, and today, today, we are, what is that? Oh, um, oh my gosh. Teacher Turbo, I forgot to tell you something. 
Well, I hate spiders. I know, but we're having a really, really special guest today. Yeah. Can you this introduce? This is our guest. Yes. Yeah. Can you let him introduce himself? Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Edward, and you have a really scary voice, and you scared oh. me a lot, and you heard me, and okay. I'm gonna cry. You scared okay. Edward. Ah. I'm sorry, Edward. I didn't. I didn't mean to scare you, but. You climbed on my arm. Well, it's not my fault. I got a lot of things to do, and I, your arm looks like a tree and all that. Oh. And I just, okay. I just like. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good. I forgive you. Great. I accept your apology. Okay. okay. Well, that's actually really good because today we're actually talking about Jesus forgiving oh, our right. sins. Yeah. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Edward, do you know what sin is? Well, uh, I saw a guy on the sidewalk, and oh. his name was Sin, mm -hmm. but and he had a really bad back. That's what he told me. And uh, I named him Sin back. So yeah, I think that's um, what it is. That's yeah. Well, that was a good guess. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> but that's not actually what sin is. Can I tell you what sin is? Yeah, sure. What? Okay. Well, sin is breaking God's rules. Mm -hmm. Any time we disobey God, that's sin. And do you know what else, Edward? When we sin, that makes our hearts really, really dirty. Oh, gross. Gross, oh, no. right? Uh, how do we get that yucky stuff out of our hearts? That's a great question. Well, actually, Edward, the way we can get rid of the sin in our hearts is by following the example of the thief on the cross. That's right. Yeah. You see, he admitted to Jesus that he was guilty. Uh-huh. Can we say that word together? Admit on the count of three. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Admit. Guilty! Oh. <laughs> no, not guilty. It's okay, though. That Admit. was a nice try. <laughs> Admit. You see, the thief did not lie to Jesus. He didn't say he didn't do anything wrong or that he had never sinned. But instead, he admitted that he had sinned. And because of that, Jesus was able to forgive him. That's right. And he actually did another thing. He had to ask. He had to ask Jesus to forgive him of all of his sins because he knew that Jesus is the only one that can forgive us. Did you know that? No. You see, when we admit that we have sinned and ask Jesus for help, he forgives us and makes our hearts clean again. <gasps> oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you see, all that sin that was in our hearts that made it all yucky and disgusting, guess what? It's washed away. It's like our hearts took a bath. I love bats. Oh right. my God. Right. And that's possible because Jesus loves us so much. So when we ask and we admit, then we can receive Jesus' forgiveness. <gasps> wow. That's awesome. So when I eat flies and all that, uh -huh. I can ask Jesus for forgiveness? Well, yeah. You, can. you could. Yeah, I can actually. Ah, oh, awesome. Oh, I'm glad you learned something. Yeah. Well, let's do this. If you don't mind, Edward, I want us all to pray together. Are you okay, okay. with that? I love praying. That's Great. awesome. Great. Okay, so boys and girls, wherever you are, just bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray together. Okay. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus, for today's lesson on teaching us on how to ask for your forgiveness. We ask that you would remind us every single day to admit that we have sinned, to ask for your forgiveness so that you can make our hearts clean again. In your name we pray, amen. 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 Well, Edward, thank you so much for being here. We had Aww. such a great time today. Aww. We'll see you guys <laughs> next time. Bye. Bye. Great day, guys. I'm going to climb in your arm later. Oh, okay. Change the world, we can change the world.
Good morning, boys and girls. How are you guys doing today? I'm so glad to be here with you. I want to talk to you about the lesson <clears throat> and carry on the points that we talked about with the story of the thief on the cross. Time. Time, you know, you ever think about it? Time can sometimes be our friend or can be our enemy. It can be something that, oh, we're anxious about or, oh, why can't this clock move? Like at Disneyland, for instance, my favorite ride, might be your favorite ride, Pirates of the Caribbean, sitting, waiting in line, waiting in long, tick tock, tick tock, waiting, 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 oh my gosh. And then finally, finally, you get to get on the ride, and then you step in, oh, and then time is not your any anymore. In fact, in fact, you might even be doing a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. So. In that time, and as well as time, some people might think, and I'm sure the people that knew that thief, they knew who died on the cross, his time was over. He was done. He had been sinful all his life. And you mean to tell me that, that he's going to ask Jesus, remember me in your kingdom? And Jesus is just gonna say, yep, see you in paradise. I wanna bring these points to you, boys and girls. And that leads me to the first point of how we can get on the right steps for forgiveness. First thing we have to do, and this is a hard one, it's a hard one for me, I don't know about you guys, but admit you are guilty. Boys and girls, you can ask anybody around me, I'm real easy to forgive people. I'm just, sure, no problem. But admitting you're guilty, uh, sometimes that could be a little tough. That could be a little tough. But we have to remember that in Romans 3.23, we are all guilty. Did you hear that, boys and girls? What's the phrase? Just think of me when I sit there and underline it when I'm at Studio 56. All, oh, and I'm taking my fist and pounding it on the wall. We are all guilty. But what did, it, what did that thief say? Remember me in your kingdom. And how did Jesus answer him? I'll see you in paradise. Which brings me to point number two. We have to ask Jesus for help. Who is the only person that's ever walked this earth and was absolutely sin free? That was Jesus. And he is the only one that could forgive us. Because boys and girls, what is it about? We've all sinned, so what? We all need forgiveness. And the forgiveness is from who? Jesus, who is perfect. Which leads me into point number three. We have to receive God's forgiveness. It's because sin messes up our lives. And if we don't receive God's forgiveness, what's gonna happen? I'm telling you what's gonna happen is Satan's gonna come back in and he's gonna be whispering in your ear. Remember, remember John, remember, remember when he did that? Cause he's the accuser. And what do we do? How do we combat that? We just say, nope, nope, that's not true because I did the three steps, which are to admit you are guilty, ask Jesus for forgiveness and receive God's forgiveness. So I got a little demonstration here. I like, I got a beaker here. I like saying that word beaker because of, you know, where I work in the water industry, not quite a beaker because it's not measured out, but it'll work. We have sin, sin that enters our life. And then we have God who corrects it. And here we are. Remember boys and girls that we are all, we're born, but as we all know, we all have that sin nature and we're born with sin. As soon as we come out of that womb, we're born with that sin. Or even before that, as God knows us. And here's sin, murky, dark, nasty sin into our lives. And it doesn't, it doesn't really dissipate. It, it, ta it takes time to, to mix and to fester. There it is, festering in our lives. Look at that sin, dark, dirty. That water was clear. But here we have Jesus and we've asked him for forgiveness. He's the perfect person because he's never sinned. So here's Jesus, comes along, boys and girls. And here we ask him for forgiveness. And then here we go. Oh my gosh, there he did. Took away that sin completely from us. Look at that, look at that. All clear, sin's forgiveness, and the beaker is completely clear when we ask Jesus correctly. So let's just hammer these points down. I wanna hammer them all. We have to admit you are guilty, 
ask Jesus for help, and receive God's forgiveness. Now, boys and girls, I wanna lead you all in a prayer right now. And maybe there's people in your lives that you haven't forgiven, or people that, that you need to forgive. So right now, I wanna take this opportunity for us to pray. And right now, I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads and repeat after me. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for coming into my life, Lord. And Lord, I just forgive all the people that have done things against me, Lord. And I also ask for your forgiveness, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for dying on that cross because that's so important. In Jesus' name, and all his people said, what boys and girls, amen. No, that's not how we do it at Studio 56. I want you guys to rock your house down, amen. So long, boys and girls, miss you. See you next time. Teacher John, out. Hey boys and girls, thank you for coming back. Right now we're gonna worship God, but we're gonna do something special. This song that we're gonna do is called I Surrender. And right now as we begin to worship God, we're gonna surrender everything in our lives, everything, our worries, our cares, especially our sins. So what I want you guys to do right now is to close your eyes, lift up your hands and get ready to sing this song with me. This song is gonna be such an amazing experience that you're gonna have with God. So let's go ahead and get started. sing a little louder if you have to, but let's worship our God. Sing, drench my soul. Drench my soul, this mercy and grace unfold, a hunger and thirst, a hunger and thirst. With I know you hear my cry Speak to me now Speak to me now 
to me now. Can we sing I surrender? Oh, I surrender. I surrender. Cause I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Cause I surrender. Surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Yes, Jesus, we want to know you more. Come fill our hearts, Jesus. Like a rushing wind And like a rushing wind Jesus breathe within And Lord have your way And Lord have your way And in me And like a mighty storm I surrender I surrender I want to know you I want to know you Cause I surrender I surrender Hey boys and girls, before you leave today, I wanna check in with you and make sure you are right with God, all right? I'm gonna go over five really quick things, okay? Five really quick things that help you understand what position we are in God's sight. First thing I wanna to talk to you about is that God, He loves you. And there is nothing you can do to make God not love you. Man, I know that that sounds like a crazy idea, but it is 100% true. There is nothing you can do to make God not love you. Now in the past, there were two people who were in this world that, that started all kinds of things in God's creation, right? He gave them a place, he gave them a beautiful land, and he gave them choices, right? One of the most important choices that he told them to be mindful of was not to touch or partake of a specific fruit within that garden. Well, boys and girls, they got tempted, they made a bad choice, and let me tell you something, because of that choice, sin entered into our world. That's the second thing I wanna to talk to you about. Sin came into our world. Now what happened was, is this separation occurred between these two people in God's creation and God's love. They got separated from his presence. But God was like, you know what? I can't stand for this. I'm gonna formulate a plan and I'm gonna bring my creation back to me. So what he does is he sends Jesus, right? Jesus becomes the bridge, the superhero, the sacrifice that was needed to take place in order to bring us back into God's presence and to experience the fullness of who he is. Oh my gosh, boys and girls, such a great thing that Jesus did. We remember that on Easter. He died on a cross. He paid a penalty for our sin 
bringing us back into God's presence. Now you would think, all right, great. Jesus did all the work. He is the ultimate superhero. Praise God. Everything should be cool, right? Well, it's not. There's one thing you have to do. We have choices to make in our lives. And one of the most important choices that we can make is to follow God through Jesus. Now, how do we do that? How do we follow God through Jesus? Well, I'm gonna give you an opportunity right now to find out where you are. Boys and girls, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Because that's what you gotta do. You gotta receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. When you receive him as your Lord and Savior, just like in today's lesson, you saw how Jesus came through and, and totally wiped out that, that sin that was in that beaker, right? The beaker was your body. You remember that, right? Such an amazing thing. That is literally what Jesus does on the inside of us. He locates that sin and he removes it from us and throws it so far from us as a person. He takes, he takes a place in our home, he becomes a part of us, and with his help, we learn to serve God to the best of our ability, but we have to receive him. How do we do that? Well, we pray a prayer. We invite him in. It's that simple. When you do that, you're born again. Yes, it's that simple. Now the cool thing is that one of the kids asked me one time, what does it mean to be born again, right? Does it mean that I'm gonna like, all of a sudden I'm gonna receive Jesus and I'm gonna have to like go into my, my mother and say, mom, we gotta do this all over again. Your mom's gonna be like, no way, back up. We did that once, it's only gonna happen one time only. You're not gonna transform into a baby. It's not the outside that changes. Boys and girls, it's the inside. That's what God is looking for. That's what God cares about. That's what the goal is. We wanna see a change on the inside. So, are you ready? This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna to count to three. And when I count to three, if you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is raise your hand, all right? Now, even though there's a camera between us and there's a screen, I virtually see you, right? But more importantly than me, God sees you. And that's what's written in this word. When you confess and you ask and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus will acknowledge you. He will confirm what you've done. So boys and girls, I'm going to count to three. And if you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we can do that now. Ready? One, two, three. All right. Good job. Let's do this. Let's pray. Let's invite him in. Let's receive him so that he can do what only he can do. Remove that sin. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Follow this prayer after me if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Here we go. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. Jesus, come into my heart. Take away my sin. Wash my heart. White as snow or just like that beaker. I am yours and you are mine. I receive you now. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Good job, boys and girls. Thanks for joining us here on Planet Rock Live. Now in our video description below, right in all those little links, there's one that says, I received Jesus. If that's you, click it. Fill it out with your parents. We'll get to know who you are. Good job, boys and girls. And until next time, God bless you and we'll see you again soon.